And welcome to today's Regen interview. We're talking with Mike and Jane from Perth in Western Australia, who have decided to get into the political fray like a few people stepping up and putting their hat in the ring to see what they can do to help this country head in the right direction as they see it. So we're going to talk with them and just find out what's making them tick and what's what's the motivator for being in this uh, political contest. So Jane, we might start with you because I think this is all new ground for you. It sure is, it can. Very new ground for me. <laughs> and and how are, are you enjoying it or is it just overwhelming you at the moment? Look, it's not overwhelming me. I think I'm having my eyes opened to a whole lot of things. Um, it's a bit of a whirlwind, to be honest, but, um, you know, look, we're, we're just on the journey, on the journey and um, meeting a really, a lot of really good people and hearing a lot of stories. And yep. uh, so, yeah, I think I am enjoying it. It's new, though. It's good, it's, to have a, it's good to have an opportunity to, to actually have serious conversations with people about the things that matter to you and to, and to them. Is that, is that how you're finding it? Because that's, that's the feedback I'm getting from other candidates. Yeah, yeah, definitely. People are very vocal in saying what matters to them at the moment. And uh, there's a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of, um, I think a lot of people have mm. feel like trust has been broken and uh, people want to be heard. I think that's important to them. And, and you've never done anything like this before. You've never been in a political <laughs> arena. <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> in fact, I'm, I don't know if I'm that comfortable with that word, to be honest. <laughs> you know, we've met, I've met a few people and, and they, they say, you know, actually, I can't say what they say, but um, a lot of them aren't very fond of politicians. And, uh, you know, I'm quick to say I'm not a politician. Yep. yep. <laughs> I'm not a politician. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, so very quickly, your background in terms of your profession or skills, crafts what, what's what's your background yeah well i'm i'm a credentialed minister of the gospel mm -hmm. and uh that's that's been what i've been doing for many years i've been working in the area of pastoral care in a local church um and working in the community so a lot of community involvement through the church but uh, also working with local government and local businesses, organisations and charities. So is that a motivator for you? I mean, most people come to this space with some sort of driver, internal driver, you know, it's like, it's mm. so, so you've got a pastoral orientation, clearly. Yeah. Uh, is that what's calling you to, 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 you know, reach out to people who you're seeing who've got that broken trust, who've got that, you know, perhaps disillusionment? Is that, is that fair, fair observation? Absolutely. It's all about the people. Mm. It's uh, definitely about the people, but I think, you know, we're living in times we've probably never been, well, we haven't been before. It's a whole new ball game, And there's a lot of, there's a lot of fear out there. And, you know, people, people are concerned. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff going on in our country. Um, Mike and I, we have three children, adult children. We've got six grandchildren. And the reality is we feel, well, I feel a responsibility to my children and to my grandchildren and, um, you know, for this generation and for this country, I love this country. Well, especially and the grandchildren, because, you know, the sort of things mm. that we've enjoyed and perhaps taken for granted through our lives, they are not, they, they can't really expect those things anymore. It's a different landscape, isn't it? It sure is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's very different. And so who are you running for? Do you have a party or are you running as an independent? What's your... No, not as an independent. We're running with the Australian Christian Party, okay. which is a WA party. And the, the wonderful thing about it is they you don't have to compromise because it's it's kingdom principles, it's biblical principles. And so for, for me, that's easy. It's it's a very clear cut. Um, it's just very clear cut in the sense of it doesn't go against anything that I believe. So, you know, whereas some parties... Yeah. Um, it, you can't vote for a secular party and expect a Christian outcome. Um, you know, at some point, it doesn't matter how good Christian, you know, how wonderful people are, um, they may have to cross the line and just go with a party line, whereas Australian Christians, it's quite an easy So that's a, that's a WA-only party, but in a federal uh, election, obviously. So you're running for the Senate, that would be? 
No. Mike's running uh, for the Senate. I'm oh, sorry, Mike's running, running for sorry, I got around the wrong way. You're running for the lower house. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm running for the lower house suit of brand. So but only in WA, that's that's in WA. That's my yes. point. Okay. So it's good that those I mean, joining that being on that platform, it does align with you because you're right, at some point I think this is one of the issues for people who do consider politics. They know there will be that divergence and conflict. So you do want to be correctly aligned with, you know, the right group of people representing the right platform because that's the challenging thing, isn't it? To stay true to that as you get into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and what I if, think we've seen, sorry, go on, cut you off there. You go. I think we've seen so much of that where, you know, people go into politics or uh, with good intentions, but a lot of things are compromised. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of compromise and we've been seeing a lot of betrayal too. Well, I was talking to somebody today and they said they want to ask some at a town hall type meeting, they want to ask the tough questions. And I said, what are the tough questions? And they said, well, blah, blah, blah. And one of them, the third question was, if you were offered a million dollars to be compromised on what you're talking about today, would you take the money? Mm -hmm. So there's so much, you know, cynicism in the, in, in, with regard to the political environment. So it'd be great to see people be able to turn that around because we, we desperately yeah. need it in this country. So that's, sure that's, that's terrific, Jane. Well, well done to you for having the courage, I guess, to, to put yourself forward. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I don't feel like I have a choice. Yeah. And, and that's been perfectly honest. I think if there's ever a time to stand up, it's now. Hmm. Because, you know, come next election or what have you, we don't know what our country will look like. And so, you know, am I comfortable in this and do I know what I'm doing? No. But, um... <laughs> but that's, that's, not, that's not always a bad thing. I mean, everybody is being moved out of their comfort zones in one way or another, whether you've lost a job yeah. through a mandate or whatever, you know, it, we're all being challenged. So this is a challenge. Mm. This is your challenge. And Mike, one day did she wake up and say, make your own toast. I'm, I'm running for politi political office. Was, was it? Well, it was a surprise, to be honest, because politics hasn't been on Jane's radar whatsoever in fact it's one of those things i've always had an interest in politics yeah. and uh and jane would often click off so uh, for so for her to be running in this seat of brand for a federal election is a mammoth mammoth decision and so yeah. i know i know that it's not i it's it's a we would call it a god call yeah. and those that are watching or listening if you are a Christian, you may understand that language we use, but it's definitely God's calling for this particular time. Absolutely. So, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a mission. It's a mission statement that she's making. Absolutely. And and yeah. how about yourself, Mike? What's what, where do you sit? Well, I'm running for the, the as as the number one on the Senate for obviously for the same party for the Australian Christians. For me, it was uh, I've always been interested in politics, Campbell, but it was late last year where I. I really was, I think I was challenged. And again, I think God was prompting me to, and questioning me to say, well, how am I spending my time and how am I spending my money? And I was really challenged by that late last year. And so I really, I was losing interest in the, as I was a former member of the Liberal Party. And so I did not renew um, my membership late last year. I did not re renew Jane's membership either. And then I got talking to, and I've been, I've had a fairly good long relationship with the WA director of the Australian Christians here in Perth. And uh, and she just happened to ask me one day if I was interested in being part of their state council, a bit like their board. Yep. And so I'd been on various school boards and those types of things and company boards. And I thought, well, here's an opportunity to to maybe get involved and, and help behind the scenes. I thought, perfect. <laughs> so there late last year, got, got involved. And there we are sitting around a table, Campbell, and there was only a few of us there. And and we said, they were saying, right, this is, I think, meeting number one. And so, right, we're going to have to start looking for candidates for the federal election. I said, great. I'll get behind anyone who's prepared to stand up and run. And we're all sort of looking around the room. And it was almost like God was speaking to me with an audible voice saying it's it's time it's, yeah. and i was really challenged by that because yeah. i'd had invitations previously with the liberal party if i personally wanted to pursue a a a to run as a candidate for the liberal party those doors were open but i it just didn't feel right i just had a sense in my spirit that it just wasn't the right time although i couldn't agree with everything i'm either all in or i'm not 
And so um, I really, I've always had an interest. And so it was like God was, it felt like God was chasing me down yeah. instead of me pursuing this opportunity. This is not something I've, I've chased after. In fact, I was quite happy to walk away and, and support others. So I feel like God's chased me down. I've ran for uh, a state, uh, not state, I've ran for local council here twice mm. and was unsuccessful. And I, I think if I look back and if I'm being honest with myself, I think that was a personal mm. desire to do that. It, it wasn't, I couldn't comfortably say I felt God spoke to me about that, whilst we think we, we often do. And so I think I was pursuing that in the natural, wanting that to happen, and it didn't. And I did that twice. And so I felt like, okay, God, I'll just um, mm. m maybe I will listen a little bit more carefully now. Uh, but God spoke so clearly about putting my name down to run for the Senate. And I think that really probably gives me the confidence to do what I'm doing because of my own strength. I, like Jane just said, do I know what I'm doing? No, I'm yeah. learning. Um, then we come with no qualifications with this candidacy. Yeah. And so we are putting our hand up, believing that God's God's called me for this time. And I'm reminded also that based on the outcome of the selection on the 21st of, of this month, that uh, we can look back and if we're not successful, um, I still know that God's called us to run. And there's another purpose further down the track, I believe. And so... Well, I'm not going to reflect back on if I'm unsuccessful, unsuccessful and think, well, God, what was all that about? But I know that if we are unsuccessful, that there's a greater plan and it might be three years down the track. It might be something to do with the state or it might be the next federal. So I think knowing that God's called us or called me, um, that gives me the confidence in knowing that I've made the right decision. Well, you have a, you have a background in, in media and radio, so you won't have any trouble talking. Should you get on the <laughs> Should you get on the floor in, in Parliament? <laughs> well, that's true. I am on radio, so I'm used to being on the. I'm used to being where you are, Campbell, uh, on the other side of the microphone. Uh, and Jane, does his does his voice drop out when he walks under a bridge? Is that what happens at all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that old Steve Wright joke. Uh, look, that's just one of the things I want to ask you with this party because I'm not familiar with the party at all. I, I, I'm I'm in WA based. I'm not in WA, mm -hmm. but but one of the criticisms of the moral-based parties, the you know Christian-based parties, perhaps in the in the recent times, is that they're very thin on policy. You know, they have moral positions, they have moral policies, but don't ask them about tax, don't ask them about anything else. Is that is that the situation with with you guys, or do you have a broader platform? I, it surprised me to be honest, and uh, and I never thought I'll. <laughs> I would run as a candidate for the Australian Christians, thinking it was it was shallow. There, there was minimal uh, policies, but there's there's a range of policies. In fact, there's probably more policies on the Australian Christians website than you'll find with a lot of um, smaller parties and a lot of independents. I think there's there's policies on uh, tax, there's policy on uh, economics, there's policies. Obviously, a lot of the um, when we talk about the most vulnerable and 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 uh, freedom of choice, it's, it's predominantly about faith, families, and freedom, and that covers so much. Um, there's, climate change. There's, climate change. Yeah, there, there's a, change. There's a range of policies on just about everything you can think of, comparing it to even so some we'll, of the we'll, we'll put that on screen so people, you know, have yeah. a quick look. But what I, I guess what I'm asking is behind the website, behind you know the the, the rhetoric, there is solid thinking because. Because that's really yeah. what we need. We need, you know, Correct. we've got this two-party, you know, got this Coles Woolworth sort of Pepsi Coke situation with the two-party preferred system. But yeah. then when the minor and the independent parties present, they say, well, you haven't got any real, you're very thin on policy. Mm -hmm. What would you do about this and that? So if there is real thinking behind, you know, the website, that's great to hear because it's really what's required. If we're going to be an alternative, we're going to have an alternative voice in, in government. And I think in addition to that, Campbell, not only is there some solid thinking behind the policies, the existing policies, and then, and those policies are always ongoing. They're always being developed and, and improved and tweaked along the way. Uh, but in addition to that, I think it's also bringing just a different voice, a, a voice of uh, integrity, a voice of honesty. And I think for me to be successful in... Uh, being if I was to win a Senate uh, position, 
I think my my I can't get it over just the whole integrity and honesty. And look, I'm not I'm not doing this for a career move. I'm not doing this to. Oh, I could be doing other things. Um, I, I'm doing this because I believe we need honesty and integrity restored in our parliament, not only federally but state as well. Well, that's that's you know? that's that's a that's a. I mean, that's being echoed all around the place. Everybody yeah. is saying that, and perhaps they would say that every election, but it's it's really a crescendo now. Yeah. Jane, yes. you, you talked about the conversations you're having before, and I, I was talking to someone earlier, and I said, at least we're having the conversations now. There's been this complacency in the, with regard to political issues and the political arena. Um, sorry to give you that imagery of the gladiators, but <laughs> the political, <laughs> political arena. <laughs> Um, you know, I've seen the film. You win. Um, yeah. But it, but at least we're having the conversations, right? And and that's what we need to do. And 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 I, what I, what I wanted to ask you, Jane and and Mike, is that it's because it's a you have a Christian basis to your party. Is that your audience? Is that where the voting block will come from, or is it near Christian, post Christian? Is it a broader church? Oh, the pun? yeah. That's a great question, Campbell. I personally, I'll, I'll go further. Yeah. Is that all right? I, I think it's broader than, than what we realise. Um, and I'll use the analogy of the of the radio station that I work for, which is uh, 985 Sunshine FM here in Perth. Now, we've got a very, very high listener audience. Well, I think we're getting close to 500,000 that tune in a month. Mm -hmm. So so we're getting close to some of the commercials uh, here in Perth, particularly on the AM band right. and on FM as well. Now, all of our research over the years has has told us that one third that listen to our Christian community radio station are not Christian. They wow. they they don't have any church connection whatsoever. But the feedback that we get consistently is that they love what we do. We vet every song that goes to where we we talk about stuff like normally people would, but we do it in a different context. So I think. I've got that in the back of my mind and I'm thinking, well, if people love tuning into that, they're going to love tuning into what we're saying about what we're talking about policies and, and what we believe. Because I think if you, even if you took away the word Christian off of a lot of this uh, information, I think people would go, yeah, I, I agree with that. I like that. I like the values. So you're, su you're, you're, you're suggesting that there's a latent pool of, of, of support that hasn't yet been tapped that hasn't yep. found a home that's looking for a home uh, they've you've, you've found a home of listeners up to five hundred thousand, but that's not been reflected in the in in the political vote to date uh, there's been some minor parties independents who have scratched the juco of of the major parties but there is there does seem to be a bit of a move towards uh, a new center right right kind of uh, consensus uh, or looking for a home to find consensus so is that yeah. is that where you? I mean, it sounds to me that's where you're targeting. Oh, absolutely, and I think and well, plus existing uh, the existing Christian base as well. That you know, it's quite interesting, Kevin. Even even as we meet people, uh, even today and and yesterday, people go, "Oh, I didn't realise there was a, a Christian party," mm -hmm. and they're Christian, and they've been going to church for for years and years, but they they just were not aware. So there's a there's definitely. Uh, an amount of people that that are Christian that aren't aware of us, mm. and there's a whole bunch of people that are not church based, wouldn't call themselves a Christian, may even tick the box on the census that they're not Christian. Mm. However, but they look at what we're talking about and go, "Yeah, I can, I can connect with this because mm. they're family values." Well, even the term Christian has some elasticity to it. So, you know, what does that might mean different things for different people? But you mentioned sure. you mentioned um, climate change before as a policy. Uh, I was told recently from some um, analysis done in the South Australian state election that up to, I think it was close to 20% of the Christian vote uh, actually voted second preference and they, they went uh, minor parties one, Greens two. Now that I found surprising because in mm. my, I, have wow. a, I have a fairly jaundiced view of the Greens party, but um, yeah. that, that, uh, that other, that, that the Christian vote would actually give a preference to a party that actually has some fairly questionable policies wouldn't necessarily be deemed Christian policy. So this whole idea of the Christian vote needs careful handling because it's not as clean and as straightforward as people might like mm -hmm. to think. 
Um, so the fact that you've got climate change policies in there, you potentially can talk to those people who might be concerned about those issues, but don't feel the major parties are giving it serious consideration. So, that, so, yeah, that, that number surprises me, Campbell. I mean, the other interesting thing, as you were talking there, I was just being reminded about the, uh, the, the Christian values uh, document that's produced every every election and i think it's done by the canberra canberra, canberra declaration yep. so it's an independent body i'm not sure if you're aware of it but that clearly puts a ticket across yeah. a range a whole across a whole range of topics and it ranks the parties where they are so you can you can easily see what each party believes in when we're talking about a lot of the christian value stuff and are you affiliated at all with acl because acl is a, a lobby lot no of, not at all okay uh, and I think that's the other confusion. I think when mm. people, when you talk to people to say, we are from, we are representing Australian Christians, so they say, oh, you're the ACL. No, no. The Australian Christian lobby, the ACL, is a lobby group. Yes, and the difference is we are an actual party. And they go, oh, so you're different. Yes, so we're, so you can't vote for the ACL. People think they want to vote for the for Matt Niles, and that'd be great, but uh, they're not a party. And so... It's what we feel like we're educating people on some of the real basics. Even yes, we are a party; we do exist, but we are quite separate. But we work alongside of the ACL. We do a lot of things together. Like we've got some info nights coming up next week right. on how to vote. That's in partnership. So the ACL that will be there as long as we will be there as well. Well, you just touched on how to vote there, and you know most people have seen Tofa's Marvel video, and yeah, and everyone went, "Wow, wow, that's amazing." What was amazing was that people needed to be told about the preferential system in their mid 30s or 40s or 50s you know that clearly is a lack of understanding about how the preferential voting system works yeah so you talked about information nights next week just giving people having the conversation jane that we talked about before you know you'll have an opportunity next week to to talk to those people have more conversations and talk about preferences and you know climate change so it's really good i mean th this is this is what i think is so terrific is that we're all kind of moving out of our complacency and saying, okay, well, how does the preferential system work? You know, what's, what are the really top, hot topics here? What do we have to do? So, Jane, when you go around and talking to these people, you know, from in your area, in the seat of brand, are you, is there one or two issues that are really high on their radar that you're hearing consistently? Look, I, th I think the biggest issue that seems to be echoed around the place is anger, frustration, um, the lack of trust yeah. for our current government and politicians in general. Um, that's that's just it's coming up over and over and over again. And a lot of people don't trust any of them. And you know, we we've heard this over the years. I've said it. You know, <laughs> yeah. can't trust any politicians. Are all as bad as one another. So that's. The fact that there is that heightened frustration, I think is a good thing in the sense of exactly that, that people, including myself, are getting educated, mm. saying what is going on. And, you know, that means you do need to actually take some responsibility and you do need to actually look into these parties and the individuals and do some homework. So um, just even having the the opportunity to talk to people about that and i think there is so much education that needs to be well probably probably look we're a very apathetic nation aren't we we just kind of go to the polls if we feel like voting we will if we don't we, we don't but uh, we are at a critical time and you know there's so much um to be won or lost at this point of time well i think our, i think our our, our easy going iconic easygoing she'll be right australian attitude has worked against us absolutely uh, and, and it's time to shake that off and we've it seen is. that through the last year or two so your sort of your sort of decisions mike and jane to actually step forward and be part of this is is you know an indicator of at least from your point of view but also other people are doing it. a lot of other people are doing it and they're getting engaged even if they're handing out how to vote cards or going to town hall meetings you know so there is a stirring, which is really good to see, I think, because we, yes. we, we cannot be asleep at the wheel and, you know, we just can't. So no, we can't. It, yeah. it's I, I think there's, look, there's been, a, just on that, Kim, I think there's been interest in politics 
this year like we have never ever yeah. seen before. Yeah. I mean, I talk to even 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 young teens and early twenties, and people are actually asking a question. They're actually taking an interest. I think that's a really important point, Mike, to jump in there because that you just yeah, yeah. You, you just mentioned something not many people talk to. The, the emerging interest in the 18 to 21 year old yes. is really high. And they're, yeah. I think they're thinking, Jane, you threw to that point before, which was, you know, our children, our children's children. They're saying, well, what sort of future do I have in this country? Right. I, better en I better engage. Whereas perhaps people of our vintage were a little bit more relaxed, complacent, yeah. lazy, indifferent, choose a word, mm -hmm. all of the above. Yeah. And that yeah. can't be the case anymore. And, and Mike, you're talking about and you both were talking about, you know, the, the disillusionment and the betrayal and the trust and those sort of words. Jane, they're not really issues, they're symptoms of a deeper, deeper, deeper issue. And, and we've got to get on the inside and to work out, I think, which is what you're trying to do, which is terrific. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can't just sit on the outside, you know, you can't just sit on your microphone, Mike, and, 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 and say things, you know, we've actually got to get active, which is what you've done, right? And I think that's it. I think you know we, we it's a bit like the Aussie the Aussie way, isn't it? We love to we love to sit back and complain and whinge. But I, I think, and Jane mentioned it earlier. I just think time's running out. I think this federal election is such an important one, and we we can't sit back any longer. And it's not like we've, we've got all the answers. But I but I believe if we can have some influence, and I and I guess that's where I see an opportunity. If we can have an influence, and particularly in the Senate from a Christian perspective, to look at all policy, what does it look like from a biblical perspective, regardless of what we're talking about, whether it's environment, whether it's tax, whether it's education, whether it's health, what does that look like? And no one's looking at that. Can, let's, can we have a viewpoint from a biblical perspective? And I think throwing that into the mix of a whole range of other different people, I think it's a healthy parliament to have. Well, so the Senate is crucial, as you fully appreciate so yeah. good, good on you and and for my, maybe we'll just conclude our talk today i really enjoyed talking with you because just it's just so encouraging to see people who like you said jane moving out of your comfort zone you know being prepared to do something <laughs> wa has been on people's um you know radar there's been a few things going on there yeah um has just a just to finish up has, has it got any better how's what's the mood of the troops Oh well. Wow. Oh look, I think I think it's improved slightly, um, and here we are uh, in May. I think it's improved slightly. I think I think people are still feeling not quite settled. There's still a lot of fear. I know you mentioned it earlier. I think people are feeling a little bit fearful and a little bit unsure. I think the uncertainty is it going to be another press conference in an hour, and are the rules going to change? And I think that's what we we have experienced yeah. over the last couple of years: the uncertainty what's going to happen tomorrow. So I think it's improved slightly. I think we've, we've, we've come a long way, but there's still that, that feeling of the community. And that, and that feeds the fear and the lack of trust that you talk to, Jane. So, yep. and that's why there is perhaps an opportunity to, to present, well, not, not perhaps there is an opportunity to present an alternative. I, I, what, just to, to, to conclude, those, those points you made before, Mike, about that, that pool of, you know, in your audience base, I think that's almost untapped in Australia, and I don't think we've got the messaging quite right yet. Sounds yeah. like you guys are really doing something, you know, in your patch, which is yeah. terrific. So, so well done to you. Wish Thank you the you. best. I know you've got a couple of really busy weeks ahead of you. Yeah. You probably won't get much yeah. sleep with information nights and answering calls and doing interviews and so on. So, good stuff, Jane. Good on you, and all the best as you travel around. We'll we'll track Thank it we'll, on the night. We'll track your figures with great interest. <laughs> great, Campbell. <laughs> Thanks very much. I, I, to be honest, I think not one individual or one party has the answer to this. No, no. I think it's going to take the body. It's going to take you know Australians coming together. I think the church has a very big part to play in it, mm. and I think it's going to take a move of God to actually turn this nation around. And that's my absolute honest truth. And you know, people are asking. People are uncertain and there's a lot of uncertain times and people are asking what's going on. Mm. And I think people are waking up. That we're actually at war here. There mm. is a war between good and evil going on in our midst. Well, like I said, it's an arena and uh, you're in the battle. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely is a war. <laughs> so good on you. And, and let's hope you do come out victorious. And whatever happens, Mike, back to your point before, 
it's meant to be and you'll you'll gain yep. from it and uh you, you've, yeah. ad, you've added to to the culture in the process so thank you very yes, much right. for both of you pleasure thanks, thanks campbell thanks campbell